Welcome to the Zero BS CRM walkthrough. This is the video that shows a little bit inside of what the Zero BS CRM system gives you. So when you activate the plugin, you're taken to the Thanks for Installing page. This gives you a lot of useful links. And from there, you can step through into your settings. Um, this install has all of the extensions in the starter bundle. As, as well as the, the WooSync, um, but because I'm using PayPal Sync, I don't need WooSync in this install, but it's it's there for my own test purposes, so that it all works well. Um, it's also got mail campaigns and my own personal Envato Sync, which we, due to the Envato model, they don't actually give you customers, so we didn't deem that one worthy of release, so that's just a personal extension which brings in my own Envato sales. And then we've got a very useful um, feedback tab, which if there's anything you find through actually using this system yourself, just please do let us know. Um, this is for feedback on if there's any features like you'd like to see or bug you may have found, or an idea for an extension. Um, probably the most important one is, in a, is ideas for extensions. We want to make this better and we want to keep giving you extensions that are useful. Um, so please do let us know. Um, we have a full documentation for each of the extensions and um, that's on a separate website so following that link will take you there and if you need any support then just drop us an email where we're handling via email at, at the moment until we decide whether or not we need a support for them um, so that's the, the boring bit of the system um, so I think it's useful just to show what it is from a customer point of view so you go into customers and this is your customer page so you see this is actually my live data so I've hidden these names to protect any identities and you can see when they've been added so this is all useful information and a quick walkthrough of adding a new person on so if I were to add new then I can quickly fill in this give them a customer tag so what I'm doing with customer tags is I'm tagging it with um, effectively some of the item names for now but you can have any any tags in there um, so you can fill everything in here and then hit save and then that's your customer done so they all then come through into your managed customers so it's a great way to keep track of any customers and these are automatically added from my PayPal sync so anybody that makes a purchase gets added into my CRM as a customer and then I can use all the sorts of tools later down to keep in touch with them and just generally be really useful. And the good one for me is total value. So I can see out of my customers which ones are of big value to me and which ones I've purchased maybe a few less. And then I can see who's had a quote and who's had an invoice. So the quotes and customers' quotes and invoices are all standard in the free um, extension. So if you are running a small business and you just want to manage your customers, send them quotes and send them invoices and manage their invoices that way, then it's straightforward to doing this. So you can just add a new quote, or you can head over to invoices and keep track of all your invoices you've sent and which customer you've sent them for. And then all these values get accumulated onto the total value. So it's, a, so it's all nicely linked together and it's a just out of the box, it's a great tool of being able to manage your customers, manage quotes, and manage invoices. So that's the basics of the CRM. Um, as you'll see on my own CRM, I've got the sales dashboard extension, which gives you a lot of useful metrics about your business. Um, it's, this is probably one of the tools that gets me coming back to this CRM, so I can quickly and easily see how things are going in the business without having to do PayPal downloads or without having to log on to Envato and see oh we've had this many sales and so this is a, I'll delve into that a little bit deeper and I'm also I've got active the mail campaigns um, so if I wanted to create a new campaign or manage my existing campaigns I can do so there um, so this is super straightforward to do so if I'm doing a new campaign I can say oh okay and then let's do a July mail shot and then you can quickly and easily segment your customers. Um, so our name contains my name. And then I can just apply 
and then it brings through me because I am a customer. And then, but this will bring through as many customers as you have that fit these criteria. So this is a great way, and then you can run through the next steps of you using the filter, setting and testing your campaign, and then actually sending out the email. And then it's like anything like that is tracked by this way. So this is one I made earlier. So you can see June May shot one we see one cent completed, and that's the powerful mail campaign. So I can quickly and easily contact my customers. I can contact anybody that's purchased in the last month and say welcome to the Epic Plugins family, etc. So there's a ton of power in the mail campaign and it's right where your customers are, which is massively powerful. And I'll show you a little bit into the sales dashboard in a minute of why, for me, that absolutely gives me a lot more power over my use of ConvertKit where, where I have an email list and I manage them there. Uh, but in there, I don't know whether they're a customer, I don't know what, I can add tags, but I don't know whether all of my customers are on my email list, so there's a bit of back and forth there. With the mail campaigns extension linked into all your customers, I've got, I've got access to 1,825 customers, and I can easily send them all an email if they want to. Um, so, say I send an email and somebody doesn't want to receive it, they complain, I can just go to that, that customer, edit that customer, and add a customer tag that says no no email come, no emails please. So if I go customer tags and say opt it out, add it as a tag. So that's just added a new opt it out tag, and then when I do the mail campaigns and a new campaign, I can choose. In the tags there, so that so at the moment there's no customers with that tag. So if I added some customers, then you'd see that you'd be able to select all those that have haven't opted out or have opted out, and you can say whether they have a quote, have an invoice, or have a transaction. So it's it's a great way of just easily emailing your customers based on any segments that you've made. So um, onto the sales dashboard. So that's a good way of using. These three is good if, if you've got your own business and you just want to manage your customers and send them campaigns from in, all in one place, this is a great way of doing it. Um, so with my business, I actually sell online products. So this could range from anything from ebooks, from um, WordPress plugins, WordPress themes, and all of my sales come through PayPal. So I use the PayPal. Um, sync so so it automatically keeps it up to date so I've already done the first import which goes back to all of my historic data and it builds up all the customers that I've uh, sold to since my PayPal business has been running and um, so that's a great way of actually looking at things over the past and saying oh that's quite quite useful there I can see um, how many people I've actually sold a product to in the past four years three three or four years um, so to do that in PayPal, you'd have to submit a report, you'd have to download a spreadsheet, you'd have to then um, quit, go through that spreadsheet, find all the emails from there, um, then upload that to your autoresponder, and then import that, send an email, etc., etc. And then say I wanted to look at the, the sales progress or how many customers I had in a month, I'd need to do a lot of spreadsheet analysis, and it just made it really difficult to be able to keep on top of the metrics that matter so that's why I created the sales dashboard and um, so this was building on top of the customers the quotes the invoices and um, that was already in the CRM from, from the free version and as an extension I thought it would be really useful if I could bring in PayPal information and then see it in a only one dashboard and so this is live data and you see it's very up to date that you've got any sales that have come through and it, um, it, it just gives you the metrics over the past 30 days and each of these you can click into. So, and I can say, well, let's have a look at all my recent activity sales wise, or let's have a look at my new customers. And so I've one, two, three, four, so they've got like five, five new customers there. And then, so I can actually see invoices, there won't be any because I've not done any invoices or quotes recently. And then everything just brings through everything. So if you've got a mixture of invoices and quotes, it will show up in that list. Oops, so jumping ahead. There uh, accidentally. <laughs> so each of the sales dashboard tiles you see has a little view. 
So I can go in and say, okay, in the last 30 days, and uh, this is gross revenue, and it shows it in the comparator. So you can say, oh, I've had an 8% growth um, over the period, and you can, and each of those you can drill down into. Um, but before I do that, let's have a quick look at. Um, so this is what I use to do the transparency report. So I can just say, okay, in my data, let's have a look at the prior month. So this this will be, this brings through the period to the end of May, and these numbers will be familiar if you've been following the transparency reports. So I can just go on and I can say actually, how about last? How about the latest month? How about to the end of June? And then it'll bring through the the update there, and each and it goes in further. So I can say, well, what about the last three months? And it gives even more data. So if you're wondering where are the transparency reports coming from, then it's from the, these useful tools. Uh, so going back to the last thirty days, um, and it's our little clickable button. So. That's the sales dashboard, and I'm always checking this because it's really useful to see how things are doing, how things are growing, whether any discounts are helping add to the overall uh, revenues, how many new customers I've got. So I've had nine customers less in June compared to, well, in the last 30 days compared to the 30 days prior, um, but I'm still having a, around about 2% customer growth. So all these are useful metrics, and they just come from the data. Um, and they work best with the PayPal Sync or the any of your Sync tools like WooSync Woo or PayPal Sync. They'll work fine with. Um, uh, and it, it's just a great way to keep keep track of your data. So having a look at the gross revenue, clicking into that. So th these are generally new tools that it just gives you a bigger view, and, you, and it's, it shows you how much in the current month. What about last month, three months ago, and last year? So in the same period last year, so July last year, is this amount. So uh, it's a good way of seeing actually what what's a good level for you. And then this shows gross sales over time. Um, so this is the last 12 months. So you can actually see where your last 30 days are relative to the history. Um, I've got quite a spike in February where I did quite a bit of freelance work. Um, so that's where, so, but generally, it's a pretty, pretty steady level. And tracking this over time is a great way to see effectively where your business growth is coming in, are your efforts working and like the other ones I can do that and I can filter it on different periods and it will bring through. Uh, it's the same for the net revenue so net revenue is very similar and that's actually yep yeah, so net revenue even though it says discounts that we tweaked um, so this is actually net revenue and then discounts is discounts and um, so this shows you discounts over the time as well and you can see and uh, which ones did you give the most discounts and then it's pretty much the same as you go through so fees again you can see fees over time which ones cost you the most in fees and um, so generally it's about hundred dollars a month that I'm seeing with fees some months are higher some months are lower so February I got quite a lot of fees through um, effectively just handling more money through PayPal but generally it's around hundred dollars a month at the moment uh, average revenue is a useful one where you can see whether your customer um, your lifetime value is increasing so for me it's around about $55 per new customer and that's just generally that people are purchasing themes which are more expensive than plugins so if I wanted to spend some marketing spend on my business I'd say well to make a conversion I'd need about $55 um, effectively whether that's a a useful metric you can see how much you want to spend on adverts or anything like that because you know how much a new customer is worth on average um, so then this one now brings into the new customers so it's showing you over the time um, which days you're getting the customers on so in the current month I've got four new customers 33 last month 28 and 46 a year ago so again all of these you can filter based on the time periods and you can do custom ranges if you like and then usefully it'll show you which day of the month which day of the week even your new customers coming in so is it a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday or a Saturday I'm actually getting the least new customers on a Saturday compared to some of the other days um, probably just the most on the Friday and Monday so if someone's getting to the end of the week maybe they want to work on things over the weekend so Saturday might be a good day to say actually you picked up some stuff on a Friday maybe send these people an email on Saturday and 
just offer them some help or is there just is there a reason why they don't have any customers are lower on a Saturday? Um, finally total for customers, it's the same sort of view. And again it's showing how many have been added over time. So it, it sort of it's varied over the last year. It's between thirty and fifty customers a month. Again February was high um because I've done a lot of uh, outreach and freelance to new clients. So you can see there that actually we're between 30 and 50 customers per month that have been adding. So again, these are all interesting things that I'll be tracking over time in my transparency reports. So that's the whole sales dashboard. And at any time you can just jump back to the main dashboard and see it in an easy, all in one place. And you can even you can do custom ranges and you can do all sorts of super useful things. So that's the pretty much everything in the CRM at the moment. Um, there's a couple of other extensions available such as the um, CSV import so if you do want to import anything um, to your system you can just quickly upload it and if you have a CSV full of your data from your old CRM it only takes a couple of minutes to get that into this new CRM um, and then just, just keep using it, just keep adding customers um, add new leads as they come through and then work on converting those leads to customers and that is where the real power from a CRM comes. It's one, it's tracking new customers, um, new leads even, sorry. So if you get an email through, then you add that as a, as a lead and go from there. And then you can actually say, right, I've got this person, he's a lead. And then work that lead through to a customer. And if you've got a customer, then it's an easy way of seeing when you look into the customers themselves of what they purchased and is there anything that you can offer them so can you offer them a cross sell can you offer them an upsell and then so once you've got a customer in, in your system it's usually easier to sell to them than uh, a cold lead so if somebody's come in and they've just asked you an email a uh, question or something generally about a plugin or a theme and they've not yet purchased then that person is ha is generally less likely um, to buy them somebody that's already bought from you before, they know that what your products are like. Um, so that's, that's that really. So I don't want to spend too long on this video. I'm already at about 17, 18 minutes now. Um, there's, so, there's a lot more that I could go through. But this is just, a, in fact, it was meant to be a sneak peek into the system. And I think it does that. It gives you, shows you exactly what you get out of the box. And with the customers, quotes and invoices, and if you buy the starter bundle, then you, you'll have mail campaigns, sales dashboard, and also the ability to connect to your PayPal account and have it automatically keep your CRM up to date with customers and up to date with um, all your useful metrics. I'll do some further shorter videos into some of the, like adding a new customer or sending your first quotes. Um, but that's all for today. Thanks for listening.